You've probably seen ads like this everywhere recently because they're making a huge comeback in the world of advertising, marketing, and graphic design. I really like this style too, and in this video I want to go into making one of these vintage ads and some of the tips and strategies to make it feel authentic. So with that being said, let's get into it. So I think the first step to creating one of these ads is definitely about finding inspiration. Since it's a callback to some of these older design tropes, it's very important to recognize some of them to make it feel authentic and from that time. Since inspiration is valuable, it's very important where you get your resources from. So I have a ton of vintage magazines so what I'm gonna probably do right now is look through a bunch of those and see what we can find. I like all kinds of different stuff. I usually like some of the more simple black and white ones but I'm also a big fan of the big hero image colored options. There's honestly a bunch of different directions you can go but for this video specifically I think I want to incorporate some more color even though I'm usually a more fan of the black and white ones and with that color I think we want to do one big hero image. Ended up finding some cool stuff and we should be ready to design soon. However if you don't physical references I don't blame you that's not a problem I didn't get any of this stuff until very recently there's also a lot of cool digital and online references you can look through including Pinterest Internet Archive fonts and use they're all great resources for vintage inspiration I really like some of these vintage Walkman ads and I'm thinking of leaning towards that it actually gave me an idea for a concept uh, some of these Virginia Slim ads are cool I really like the vintage car ads as well just for their typography placement mainly and like I was saying earlier Apple has these really cool simple ads. So I recently watched Stranger Things and the concept I actually had when I saw the Walkman ad was using the Sony cassette player and making a vintage ad based off that and a Max from Stranger Things because that's a big element in the show. I don't want to talk about it too much just in case you haven't watched it. However, it has been out for a little bit so you know. So let me just get my file set up. I think I'm just going to do 16 by 20. That should be fine. So for this concept, like I was saying, it uses Max from Stranger Things. So I'm going to have to find some stuff and also find the images of the Sony Walkman cassette player. We want something like this. I want to make sure I find something that's high res and shows her with the... Honestly, I really like this one. It might not work because it's a little too horizontal, but I'll save it for now and we'll see if we can get it to work. This one also works good if I can get one that's high res enough. That one looks actually pretty good. Let me just look around a little bit more and make sure I find everything I need for this. So I think I found everything I need. I got my main hero image and I gathered some things like the logo, some images of the Walkman from the show as well as this nice hero image. So with the biggest thing with these ads is definitely comes down to the concept as well as the copy. Copy is very important. So once I kind of get this roughly laid out, we're going to get into the copy and I'm going to have to think of something clever that works for this. I want to do a big hero image, something like that. I really like how it shows her floating and then let's edit this image just a little bit to make it look a little better. I'm gonna use the camera raw filter for that. Something's wrong with my display and whenever I use the camera raw filter it goes black. I'm sure you guys can still see but when I'm messing with it it's not working so I'm gonna have to do this over on the left side. I'm trying to think of some concepts like what we can say. I obviously like it's you know Sony Walkman like the best music to save your soul or something like that like so I'm trying to think of something. Sounds so good it'll save your soul or something like that. Could work. I wonder if we could extend this brick thing so we have some room to write copy and it doesn't really interfere with our image. That'd be cool. I just have to grab this and kind of stretch it down. That'll work for now. Normally I'd probably perfect that a lot more but I want to get this get through this so to make these feel authentic something that's really important is the font choices and the typography overall some of my favorite fonts that they use in some of these vintage ads is Cabell Black, Apple Garamond, Cooper Black, and Fatora Bold like I was saying earlier, fonts in use is a great resource for looking at some of these vintage ads because you can identify some of them and it'll also tell you which typeface is being used or you can search by the font and see different ads or different design work that it was used in. So for the sake of this video, I think I'm going to use Cabell Black because I've been really liking it lately and bringing the tracking down to about negative 25 may even do more, but that is really helpful in doing some manual kerning. Sounds so good comma, it will save your soul. Sounds maybe, sounds so sharp and clear. Sounds so sharp and clear, it just may save your soul. 
tracks a little better. I also think a big characteristic of some of these ads is tight leading and tight tracking and kerning overall, everything pretty tight. You can get it a lot tighter when you're using all caps. For the sake of this, I'm just gonna get it to where it feels comfortable. Negative 25 is looking pretty good too. I may even do 28 and then go in and do some manual kerning on some of these. Use the alt and arrow key. You can manually kern letters like that. Give them a little more space or a little less space depending on what you're looking for. All this looks pretty good. Doing this is nice because it doesn't always turn the letters perfectly. Fit this in right there and we're gonna do white. We may wanna darken up this image at the bottom like that. So what I wanna do here is grab all this, move it up slightly, something like that. And then we can actually add a gradient. Let's actually make a rectangle that goes down to about there. Put it up top and then we'll do our gradient that's actually clipping masked into that. Something like that. I wanna get the black like that, but I don't want the image to be obstructed too much. So let's get it right about there and then we'll go in and mask some of this out. All right, like how our type is looking. Now let's set up some of our bottom type. I think we go with Apple Garamond and create some kind of paragraph structure. I wanna make a new guide layout, 135, and we'll place that around all the edges. Apple Garamond, uh, normal on the fonts, move it to black, and obviously a lot smaller, maybe 16. Left the line it, auto that, and then we just need to, we're gonna have to write some copy, but I'll get back to that. I just wanna have our kind of paragraph structure something like that let me move that in a little bit font is looking a little big too 14 maybe could work something like that is cool and i also want to have some really small copy going across the bottom some of the more legal stuff i feel like that helps it look more authentic and we'll put that in cabell regular let's put it at 10. that should work it's looking pretty good i actually want that to probably come across almost the whole thing so that's good for now and then i want to have the product right here and then some kind of different images over on the side first up we have this We'll just need to go in and fix it a little bit because it's taking out some of the center. I like to put a background of a random color on the thing so I can see into my mask better. I think that's good. I wonder if it looks better in just Cabell. Let's see real quick. Honestly, I might just keep it in the sans serif like this. So we can probably get our logo here. Let's take this white away. Now I think we can have our logo actually rag across the entire bottom and then our other images up top. Like that. And then for our other part, I want to have those images somewhere right about here. Let's make these just a random color for now. Two like that get them to fit. We might have to change the position of this Walkman logo. Get these images popped in. Well, we need to brighten that up, I think. Let's brighten it up like that and then add a mask on the other side because it got too bright. So I'm gonna go in and fix up all the small copy and then we'll get into some of the final touches as well as texturizing and whatnot. I think I pretty much got all the copy that I need. I basically played into some of the like whole Kate Bush thing saying like we have an introductory offer. You can get that cassette with it. Put some random stuff about the WM8, some of its sound system. The real power in these ads lies in the details. And to really achieve that vintage look, you have to have a combination of the right type of printing and texture. So this next step, I'm actually gonna print this on my inkjet printer. If you don't have a printer, don't worry. I'll show you a few other strategies right after this. But I'm I'm gonna scale this down to something like this, maybe 36. That way I'm saving ink and I'm getting that nice texture once we scan it back in and blow it up. So let's go ahead and set that up on the HP and then print it.
So here I'm just gonna scan this back in and bring it back into Photoshop. So if you are on the printed version, all you gotta do is scan in your thing like this and resize it to wherever you had it originally. And just kind of line it up with your original artwork. From there, I usually do a camera raw filter to fix some of the lighting and shadows and everything. Had to re-record this bit because some of the footage got lost somehow. But here's the actual camera raw filter settings if you want to copy them and just in case you were following along. From there, final setup, low brightness and contrast, and then I add this vintage magazine texture. Let me show you how this looks. So I scanned this in from an old Life magazine. I really like how it shows the blacks from the other side. It really gives it that authentic vintage magazine thin paper look. If you want this, this will also be in the project file included on Patreon, linked below in the description. From there, all you do is throw this on darken and give it like a 65% and then you're pretty much done. I know a lot of you though don't have a printer, so I wanna show you a setup where you can do this without printing it. So with that setup, all we're gonna do is get our original artwork and then add in some artificial textures. So firstly, I add this blank paper texture I got from, I think, Black Market, put it on darken, and then I add in one of the black market copy scan textures. This one's number 47. Or you can just download some copy scan textures or photocopy textures online. There's millions online for free. From there, I put a hue and saturation on negative 100 to take out that green tone. Then I just adjust the brightness and contrast a bit. Once you do all that, you should have something like this. And then finally, I add in that same vintage magazine texture I did on the printed version with darken at 70%. From there, you can make any final adjustments, maybe add a little bit of noise and fix some of the colors if you feel like it. But it's looking pretty good. I like both the printed and the faux printed digital version. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. And if you want the project file for this ad, check out the Patreon linked in the description below. If you feel like watching me design some more stuff, you can check out this video here. But that's it for now, and I'll see you next time. Peace.